In this episode, I'll be showing how you can make a little mini dungeon, all of which packs away inside a small cardboard box. Hello, and welcome back. So, if you'd like to have a go at making this, the first thing you'll need to do is download this PDF file and print out one of each page. Well, except this one. This page you'll need three of. And, as usual, it's a pay-what-you-want PDF file. So, if you're on a tight budget, download it for free. Or, if you want to support the channel, then pay as much or as little as you like. Anyway, now that that's all out of the way, let's make a start. So, if we take the three pages that have the dungeon floor tiles drawn on them, we can cut away some of the excess paper, and glue them to some corrugated card, or foam core, or something like that. And, I just use a regular glue stick for this. Then, when the glue's dried, we can cut those to size. And, that's what I've done here with my own. And, uh, as you can see, I've used double corrugated cardboard. Then we'll take the page with the three wall pieces, and this time I'll be gluing mine to some single corrugated card, as we don't want the walls to be too thick. However, before cutting them to size, you'll notice that there are some guidelines near the bottom of each wall. And the reason for this is because we're going to measure a distance down from that, which is the same as the thickness of the material that we use to make the floor tile. So, in my example, I glued the floor tile to some double corrugated card that was around 6mm thick, so, the distance I'm measuring here is also going to be 6mm to match that. Um, hopefully that makes sense. Then, we can cut it to size. And, uh, and that's what I've done here with this piece. Next, we'll measure one of the edges of the tile, and cut the wall to the same length. So, something like that. Then, we can run a line of hot glue along the middle of the black strip at the bottom of the wall, and then stick that to the side of the dungeon tile. Like you can see me doing here. And, when that's set, it should end up looking something like this. It's, uh, it's not super complicated. And, as you've probably guessed, we'll then do the exact same thing on the opposite side. Which should result in this kind of thing that you can see here. Okay, next we'll need to flip that over and measure the total width of the piece, including these two wall sections that we've just added. And we can then cut out another wall section that's the same size. Then, it's just a matter of gluing that into place as well, making sure that it's roughly centralised. And after that, we'll do the same thing again on the opposite end. So, that's the main part of the box done. Though, we are going to need to finish off the corners, and uh, to do that, we'll need to add a thin line of glue to this area here. Which is exactly what you can see me doing. And, uh, and there you go, that's one corner done. So, I'll speed things up while I do the other three, as it's the same process and you don't really need to see me do the same thing three more times, and, uh, and when that's done, that should result in a reasonably strong box. Well, strong enough for what we'll be using it for. But yeah, then it's just a simple matter of doing the same thing again for the lid, which is this piece here. Though, it is worth noting that the lid is slightly bigger than the bottom of the box, because, uh, you know, it needs to fit over the top. However, the smaller room, that's made a little bit differently. So, there's actually a separate page of walls for this room, that's this page here, which, as you can see, contains two tall walls and two short walls. And that's because we're going to glue the shorter walls specifically to these two sides here, and the taller walls to these two sides. But, uh, apart from that, it's the same assembly method as the box and the lid. And, if you like, now's a good time to do a quick test fit. And, just make sure that the smaller room fits inside the box when it's closed. Which it does. Okay, next we're going to make some stairs leading down into the dungeon. And, for these, we'll first glue this texture to some corrugated card or similar, which we'll then cut to size. There you go. Then, we'll glue these textures to some thin cereal box style cardboard, and cut those to size as well. Then, using the glue gun, we'll apply some glue to the front of the middle step, and glue the corresponding brick texture into place. First on one side of the steps, and then on the other. So that, when it's dry, we end up with this kind of thing that you can see here. Then, we can do a similar thing with the front of the other two steps, though I will mention that one of the longer edges of all three of these strips is slightly darker than the other, and it's that side that faces down towards the floor. And, when that's done, this is how it should look. Something like that. 
then it's just a matter of gluing the steps themselves into place. And, and once again, these do have one side with a bit of a shadow. And that goes towards the back of the step. But uh, yeah, the eagle-eyed among you will probably notice that I'm gluing this last one on backwards. Though I was able to tear it off before the glue fully set and replace it with another one. So here it is now that it's finished and with all three steps glued the right way around. Anyway, if I bring the bottom of the box back into shot, we're going to be gluing the stairs into this position here. So to avoid any more mistakes, I'm going to put a mark on the side that's going to be glued to the inside of the box, and then add some hot glue to the edges of the corrugated card, and to the side where I just placed the X, and glue it into place. So here I am just making sure that I'm pressing it right into the corner, and there you go, this is what it should look like. And, uh, and like I say, these are the steps that lead in and out of the dungeon. Right then, next we're going to add some 2.5D walls. And if you're not familiar with the term, these are walls that are made to be fairly low. Um, they still represent full height walls, but having them low makes it easier for gameplay purposes. So we'll start off by making a straight wall first, and for this we'll take one of these textures and glue that to some thin card. And that's what you can see me doing here just using a regular glue stick. There you go. However, before cutting it out, we'll need to score it along these two lines, so that when we do cut it out, it makes it easier to bend into this kind of shape. Okay, next we'll glue the two end pieces to some thin corrugated card or similar, and we'll cut those to size as well. Then, using the glue gun, we'll add a line of glue near to the edge of the main piece, and glue the top of one of the end pieces into place. And then do the same thing with the other end piece. So that we end up with something that looks like this. Then we can add some more glue to the edges of one of the side walls and fold that back into place so that it sticks to the sides of the end pieces. And then repeat the process on the other side. Which should, with any luck, result in something like this. However, if I turn that upside down, you'll see that it's hollow, and as such, it's going to be difficult to glue that on top of the tile. So what I like to do is take a half inch strip of corrugated card from some of my offcuts, and use a piece of that to kind of fill out the interior. And when gluing that into place, I try to make sure that it's a tiny bit lower than the edge of the wall itself. Um, hopefully you can see the kind of thing that I mean. And for the base of the box, we'll need to make two of these. Speaking of which, if I bring the box back in, we're going to be gluing these into these two positions here. So I'll go ahead and do just that, um, adding plenty of glue to the underside, and also a bit that's on the end that's going to be pushed up against the wall. So here's the second one going on now, and there you go. That's the first two walls glued into place. And like I say, these are meant to represent full height walls that reach the ceiling. Uh, we're just keeping them low to make it easier to move miniatures around. Anyway, next we're going to work on this corner wall. So when making this, we'll need to glue the main piece to some thin card again, and before cutting it out, we'll need to score it along these three lines. Then, when we do cut it out, we'll also need to make sure that we cut it along this line here as well. And if we do all of those things, we should then be able to fold it into this kind of shape. So. Hopefully all of that made sense. And, like before, we'll need to glue the rest of the pieces to some thin corrugated card, and cut them to size. Okay, when gluing it all together, we'll start off with the longest corrugated piece, and glue that into place, just like we did with the end pieces of the straight walls that we just made. So, that's gluing the top into place first, and then gluing the sides of the thinner card to the sides of the thicker corrugated piece. So, this kind of thing. That's what we're aiming for. We'll then do a similar thing with the smaller end piece, which is pretty much just a repeat of what we did with the ends of the straight walls. So there you go, that's that part done. And then it's just a matter of gluing the last piece into place. However, this time we only have the two edges to stick it to, so here I am applying some glue to those edges, and then carefully pushing the corrugated strip into that glue. And to secure the corner, we can simply add some glue to the inside and hold both walls at a right angle until the glue sets. Which should then result in this little corner piece that you can see here. Though, off camera, 
I've also filled the inside with some more scrap cardboard. However, before we glue it to the box, we're going to add a little shelf. And for this, we'll need to glue this texture with the five skulls to some thin corrugated cardboard. But for the top of the shelf, we're going to be gluing that to some thick card. And uh, obviously, we'll cut those two out. We can then add some glue to the underside of the front of the shelf top and glue the strip of skulls underneath, um, setting it back slightly from the edge if you can. Um, basically, this is the kind of thing we're trying to achieve. Something like that. Now, this next part can be a bit tricky, but uh, what we're going to try and do is hold the shelf in place against the inside of the longer wall and then kind of tack it into place with a bit of hot glue and, uh, and hold it together while that little bit of glue dries. Then, assuming it's stuck in the right place, we can add some more glue to the underside to make sure that it's not going to fall apart. So, this is what it should look like when it's finished. And, uh, and yeah, it's then just a matter of gluing it into place inside the box. So, I'll go ahead and do that now, um, making sure that there's plenty of glue inside the wall and a bit along the outside where it will be touching the stairs and the side of the box. And, uh, as I say, I'll just stick that down. And if I tilt the box towards the camera, you can see how that looks. And with that, that's this little room pretty much done. Which means we can now make a start on this wall section over here. So, once again, we'll need to glue the main piece to some thin card, and this time we'll score it along these lines here. And then, when we cut it to size, as well as cutting out the outer shape, we'll also need to cut along these lines. And after doing all of that, that should allow us to bend it into this kind of shape that you can see here. Um, I think I've made that sound a lot more complicated than it actually is. Anyway, all of the remaining pieces, they can be glued to thin corrugated card again. Um, at least that part's fairly simple. So, just like the corner wall that we made a few minutes ago, we'll start things off by gluing the longest wall section into place, which, in this case, is the outside of the kind of middle part, um, the bottom of the U-shape, if that makes sense. And that's what you can see me doing here. So, here it is now that the glue's set. Next, we can glue the small end pieces into place, again, so uh, there's not much more to say about this part really, as there's nothing new to add, so uh, you can pretty much see what I'm doing though, um, or at least I hope you can. Anyway, here's the second one being glued into place now, and uh, here it is with both of these end pieces added. So all that's left to do now is glue in this last wall section, and we'll start by adding some glue along the last remaining open edge, and then stick the wall into place, um, centralising it as best as we can. So, something like this that you can see here. Anyway, here it is from the other side, and you might have noticed that I haven't fixed the ends of this last wall into place yet. And that's because we're going to add a small altar to the inside. And it's easier to do that if the wall on either side of the altar has a little bit of give. So, with that in mind, we'll glue these two textures together in the exact same way as we did with the shelf of the previous piece, and like I say, we're going to glue that to the inside of the wall over here. So, something like this. So, I'll just hold that in place while I use a bit of hot glue to give me a temporary bond, and once I'm happy that it's not going to move, and it's in the right place, I'll add some more hot glue to fix it down more securely. And, while I'm at it, I'll also add some hot glue to the ends of the wall section as well. And here it is with the bottom of the altar attached. Though, before we add the top of the altar, I think it's best to glue it into place first. And, as you might have spotted, I've bulked out the inside of the wall again to make it easier to stick down. But yeah, this is what it looks like when it's glued into place. And, now that we've done that, we can make the rest of the altar. So, for this, we'll need to take the main altar texture and stick that to some 5mm thick foam core. And we'll also glue some of the plain stone texture to the back, so that when we cut it to size, we end up with a piece that's textured on both sides. Next, we'll need to cut a strip of the stone pattern that's the same width as the thickness of the foam core, so that's 5mm in my example, and then apply plenty of glue to the back of this strip, and wrap that around the edge of the foam core, to cover up the sides which should result in this kind of thing that you can see here. Then we can do a similar thing for the two smaller parts of the altar, 
though if you have it, use thinner foam core for these. Um, the stuff I'm using for mine is around 3mm thick. If we then take a bit of PVA glue, we can stick the smaller pieces to the sides of the larger piece, and when doing this, we do need to make sure that we keep them flush with the bottom. So there's the second one going on now, and that's what we're aiming for. Though, at the moment, it probably looks a bit more like a gravestone than an altar. Anyway, once that's dry, we can apply more PVA to the bottom of the piece, like so, and then stick that on top of the shadow that you can see on the bottom part of the altar. And when that's done, here's how it looks. Though, if you like, you can add a few other bits and pieces to this, and also to the shelf of the previous room, so here's a couple of pictures that show how I've done that, with some pottery from back in episode 5, and I've also added some candles around the altar, which you can find in episode 13. But moving on, let's take a look at how we'll decorate the smallest tile. So for this, we'll need to make two of the straight walls again, um, in the same way that we did before, and they can be glued into the places marked on the tile itself. Then to fill these two spaces here, we'll make one of the stone tombs from episode 75, with the only difference being that we'll not need the bottom plinth. We'll just glue that to the tile as it is. And in these two squares, we can add some more scatter terrain. So for one of those, I've gone with the chest from episode 19. And for the other, I've made some large jars or urns, uh, similar to those found back in episode 5 again. But I'll not make you sit through several minutes of me gluing all of those into place. Um, instead, here they are when I've done all of that. And they do need to be glued into the specific squares that I've indicated um, in order for the box to close properly when we've made and assembled everything else. But yeah, that's this room and passage done. Okay, for the passage and the room inside the lid, we're going to have to make some movable walls. So the first thing we'll need to do is take this part of the printout, glue that to some thin card, um, ideally something at least as thick as the card we've been using for the 2.5D walls, and cut those to size. Then, for this next part, I like to go back to the PVA glue and stick the smaller strip in the middle of the larger strip, and then tidy up any areas where the glue might have seeped out. And that should result in something like this. And we will need to make two of those. Then we can add some more PVA glue to the top of the smaller strip, and then stick that to the lid. Um, with the larger of the two pieces facing upwards, so that the whole thing covers the white rectangular space on the dungeon tile artwork itself. Um, it's a bit difficult to see, but uh, hopefully you can see what I've done there. Anyway, we'll need to do that for both pieces, so here's the second one being glued into place now, and we'll then give that a few minutes to dry. Right then, so while that's drying, we'll make the sliding walls. So just like the other 2.5D walls, these will need to be glued to some thin card, but this time we'll score them along the four lines shown here, and then we can cut them out. And that should result in something similar to the other walls, but this time there's a couple of tabs along the bottom. And again, the end pieces can be glued to some thin corrugated card, and glued into place just like with the other walls. Um, the little tabs don't really affect the assembly at all. Though, I will say that I didn't worry about getting the white end flush, as we're not going to be seeing that, so it doesn't really matter all that much. And here it is now that it's finished, so it's just a wall with some white tabs attached to the bottom. So if I bring the lid back in, with just a little bit of manipulation, we can slide these walls over the rectangular runners, we'll call them, and, you know, the pieces we glued into place a few minutes ago, which should result in something like that. And once they're in place, they're not going to move accidentally, um, as you can see if I tilt the whole thing forward. But yeah, the reason they slide back and forth is so that they don't catch on the sides of the box when it's closed. So when packing it away, we'll need to slide the walls in a little bit, and that will provide the necessary gap for the sides of the box to slot into. And when we're using the tile, we can slide them back out again. And while I'm on the subject of using the tile, um, we'll also need to make one of the obelisks from episode 76. In particular, the stone one with the golden tip. And just like we did with the sarcophagus in the last room, 
we don't need to include the plinth. Though, this time, we'll not be gluing it to the box, because uh, it's way too tall for that. Anyway, that's all of the main areas done. However, there is one more little secret passage that we'll need to make, and it's one that contains a large boulder. Um, you know, for that classic rolling boulder trap that, uh, that we all know and love. And for this, we'll need to take these two textures and glue them to some single corrugated card or similar. And these two, which we'll stick to some cereal box card. Though it is worth noting that the three pieces that contain the wall pattern, they have similar guides near to the bottom as those found on the outer box walls. And these will need to be trimmed down in a similar fashion. So again, in my example, because my floor tiles are six millimeters thick, I'll mark a line 6mm below this guide, and then cut away the excess. Anyway, once we've done that, all we'll need to do is glue the stone floor pattern to the sloping sides of the two corrugated pieces, which is what you can see me doing here on the screen. So, that kind of thing. And then, after adding some more hot glue, we'll attach the rectangular wall piece to the back, um, making sure that the darker edge is at the bottom and this can then be used to represent a little secret passage with a sloping floor, um, one that we're going to place the stone boulder on top of. Speaking of which, that's what we'll make next. So, to make the stone boulder, we're going to need a plastic table tennis or ping pong ball. But before wrapping a paper texture around it, we're going to give it a bit of actual texture, and an easy way to do this is to just cover it in lumpy bits of hot glue, like you can see here. And, as you just saw, I covered half of the ball first, while well, holding on to the other half, and, uh, and now I'm doing the same thing to the rest, once the first half's had a few minutes to dry, that is. And, if need be, I'll also come back in a third time and tidy up any messy areas, or, or add a bit of extra texture to the places that I might have missed. And, if it's all gone according to plan, this is what we should be left with. Okay, for this next part, we'll need a really sharp knife and we're going to try and cut away a small portion of the ball, and uh, you will need to be careful when doing this. Basically, we're aiming for something like that, and, uh, and that's going to serve two purposes. The first of which is allowing the ball to sit flat on the table, um, you know, so that it doesn't roll away. Anyway, next we'll cut out the six boulder textures, and we're going to scrunch them up several times to make the paper nice and malleable. So, there you go. Then, using a glue stick, we'll apply plenty of glue to the back, and then wrap the texture around the ball, making sure to squash it into all the little nooks and crannies, and, and also folding it around and inside that little hole that we made. So, something like this that you can see here. Then, we'll do the same thing with the other five pieces, with the aim of covering the entire ball. So, I'll leave the video running while I do that, um, just so that you can see the entire process. And there you go, this is what it should look like when it's finished. And aside from the hole in the bottom, I think it looks pretty convincing. But yeah, like I said earlier, this is going to be part of a trap, so the GM will need to describe to the players that this part of the passage is actually sloping upwards, and, uh, and then, if they trigger the trap, a secret door will open, thus releasing the rolling boulder. And that should be a fun little encounter for everyone. Okay, well, maybe not for the characters, but uh, it should be a fun little encounter for the GM at least. Anyway, next we're going to make a door and a gate. So, we'll begin by gluing one side of the gate texture to some corrugated card or similar, and simply cut that to size, like so. Next, we'll cut the other side of the gate texture exactly to size, and then apply plenty of glue to the back of this second piece, and stick that to the other side of the cardboard. So, there you go this kind of thing. After that, we'll glue the base texture to some thick card, um, the stuff I'm using is around 1mm thick, and then we can just run a line of hot glue along the bottom of the gate, 
and stick that to the middle of the base, which should result in something like this. And we will need to make two of these as it's going to be used to make a double gate. And we can also make this wooden door that you can see here in the exact same way. But as well as the doors, we're also going to be making a few archways to connect the boxes together. And for these, we'll glue the two arch textures to some thick card. Um, again, mine's around one millimeter thick. And when they're dry, we can cut them to size. Then, because the walls of the boxes are made from single corrugated cardboard, for this next piece, we're going to need something that's twice as thick. So, the obvious choice is double corrugated cardboard, which we'll cut to the same size as the archway, and around 8mm wide. Then, we'll need to apply some glue to this piece, and stick it to the top of one of the archways, um, on the reverse side that is. And we can then do the same thing again, and glue on the other archway piece, making sure that the two pieces are aligned as best as we can get them. And when that's done, we should end up with an open archway on either side, and a strip of corrugated card separating them at the top. Okay, next we'll take this texture, and glue that to more cereal box card, and all we'll need to do then is measure the thickness of the entire piece, and then cut out a strip of this last texture that's the same size. It's then a simple matter of applying some glue to the top, and gluing this strip into place so that it covers the corrugated card, as you can see. And we'll need to make two of these. But as well as the two archways, we can also make this little alcove piece in a similar way, except that this one doesn't need a double corrugated spacer in the middle, um, a piece of single corrugated card will be enough in this instance. And if you hadn't already guessed, these are going to be slotted over the top of the walls. So the alcove with the shelves, that can go over here to add a bit of interest to the end of the passage. And if I quickly put the two passages side by side, the archway, that can slot over both sides of the boxes and connect the two passages. So this kind of thing that you can see here. Plus, it also helps to keep the boxes together. And those are the last things that we'll need to make. So here's a short clip where I'm unboxing the whole dungeon, though during gameplay it's probably going to be better to reveal one box at a time, um, you know, as the party explore. And originally, I had intended to include a quick walkthrough of all the encounters that I've got planned for this little adventure, but uh, this video is already a lot longer than I thought it would be, so instead, I'll probably write that up and share it over on the blog, or the Patreon page, or something like that. Um, that's the current plan anyway. But yeah, I'm actually quite pleased with how this has turned out. Though, admittedly, it is quite a bit of work to make it, but uh, the idea is that it's something that I can take to a game store, or to run as a drop-in game at a convention, or something like that. Um, something that's easy to transport, as it doesn't take up too much space. Anyway. I'll also include this clip of it all being packed away, um, just so that you have a better idea of where all the different bits go. Though, I will add that I did think that I might have a go at making all of the miniatures that'll be needed to run this adventure as well, um, you know, something similar to the other models that I've made here on the channel, but uh, I'm in two minds, so let me know if that's something you'd like to see. And with it all packed away, I think that's the perfect time to bring this episode to a close. So, thank you very much for watching. Um, I'm not sure if anyone other than myself will actually have a go at making one of these, but uh, even if you don't, I hope it was still vaguely interesting to watch. So, thanks again. Um, I look forward to reading what you think about this one down in the comments. And, uh, and yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.